As you can probably tell from the decorations on my bookshelf, it's Christmas, or nearly Christmas. That's my Christmas decorations. The batteries are dead on about two thirds of them, but they're still flashing on one third. So that's it, that's all the Christmas you get. I'm not good at Christmas. Used to like it when I was a young man. It seems like the older I get, the more we lose sight of the true meaning of Christmas, which is getting presents. My brother, I don't know if I've ever mentioned my brother, he's an idiot, uh, my brother is, and uh, he had a good idea. So my brother was supposed to be here to launch this with me, but today is the day he gets his ankle bracelet off. Or actually, he gets one of his ankle bracelets off. The other one has another three months to go, I think. But at least he won't make that god-awful clacking noise when he walks around, I hope. Yeah, the Christmas thing. We're doing a Christmas special. Uh, this was, as I say, Arlen's idea. I would ne never have had an idea this good. Um, he said, why don't you do something special to celebrate the nine days of Christmas? So I said, okay, what do you suggest? And uh, he said, why don't you do nine videos? And I said, well, that would take me a month and a half. And he said, no, just do them all very quickly. Did I tell you he was an idiot? But in theory, I like the idea, but they'd have to be short videos because I'm not a very quick editor. And uh, he said, yeah, it'd be fine. You can make them short videos. So what we did was we went down to the warehouse. The warehouse is where all the stuff that, that Nikon and Ari and uh, um, what's that Scandinavian one? Hasselblad. That's where they send all the cameras and stuff that they give to me. And we keep them in the warehouse. And uh, I went down there with Arlen and we looked around and we picked out nine things that we thought would be... Uh, make good Christmas presents or Hanukkah presents if you're um, Jewish. Am I allowed to say that? Can I say that? There's nobody over there. I just did that so you'd think I had a director. So in keeping with the true spirit of Christmas, these next nine days are going to be nine recommendations. I'm going to recommend nine things that you could buy somebody for Christmas if they're a photographer or if they know a photographer or if they don't know a photographer and want to meet one, you could walk around with this in your hand and somebody would probably come talk to you and say, that's a nice light tent, microphone, camera, flash. So here's the deal. The next nine days, if I can keep it up, we're going to have nine videos. And in each of those, I'm gonna give you a brilliant idea for a Christmas present for somebody who is photographically inclined in most cases. I mean, no, they're photographically inclined all the time, but my ideas are photographic most of the time. Forget it, forget it, it's too complicated. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. Um, any questions? Oh, there's a, gonna be a competition. And one of the things that we're going to be talking about is the Apexel microscope lens that I'm so excited about. We'll be talking about that in one of these nine days. And when we do, there'll be a competition. And in that competition, there's going to be a quiz with one question. And that question is about a telescope. And all you have to do is answer that right and you'll win the prize. And there'll be five prizes. So like I told you before, Half of you are going to win, but you have to know the answer to the question. In fact, you don't. You can guess it and you'll still probably win. One quick serious thing before we get into this, and that is uh, a thank you to my Patreon supporters and everybody else who's done so, so much for the channel, so much for me over the last couple of years. I bought a uh, computer, finally, uh, after a couple of years of really having a hard time getting by with the old one. Uh, this is an upside down MacBook Pro. This is the correct way up MacBook Pro, but it's the same computer. Uh, this is a much better computer than the one I had. So I wouldn't have been able to get this. Um, I hadn't paid for it yet, but I wouldn't have been able to even start to get it had it not been for the generosity of the people that support my program. So thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Before we can get into gift number one, 
A promise is a promise, and I made a promise, and I am going to keep my promise. And the promise was, hey, I bought some MF12s. How do you diffuse them if you don't like the little plastic uh, cuppy thing that's on them? I don't. Here's how you do it. Take a sheet of tracing paper. I use this 45 pound premium tracing paper. Uh, I'll put a link in the show notes so that you can find it. it. It is the best and I've tried them all and it's cheap for such heavy paper. Take the sheet and cut a strip about the width of your Godox MF12. It doesn't have to be precise, but if you're gonna go wrong with it, go wrong on the too wide side, not the too narrow side. There. Now, the idea is we stick it above and below the flash to make a loop out in front. But as you can see, first of all, it doesn't go on at the bottom very easily because there's a thing in the way. And also that's a bit too long. We would like to have it a bit shorter. I generally suggest you make it about three of the units of which this is two. Now that was too difficult the way I said that. Make it about five inches long. There you go. Okay. All right. Now uh, take it like this and then look at your, look at your business down here. The, the, pay attention, this bit here, and then cut that out of this by going like a cut there and a cut there, like that. You don't even have to cut it off if you're bad with scissors. I don't want anybody to lose a finger doing this. Then take three pieces of sticky tape. If you're in the UK, this is called cellar tape. If you're in, uh, I didn't make the hole big enough. I'm gonna do one more cut here. If you're in, um, if you're in Germany, this is called uh, sellotape. It's called sellotape there too. Um, ask Ingolf, he knows what it's called. Then see, I stick a piece of sticky tape on one side like that. And then a piece, uh, you're never gonna guess this, but the other piece goes on the other side, like that. And then, all right, this isn't for the prize, this next question. This is just to see if you're paying attention. Where does the last piece of tape go? Correct, on my forehead. Goes right there, right there, like that. And you have just created a walls diffuser. Now you're probably thinking, well, hang on just a sec there, governor. You're always talking about using two layers of diffusion. Indeed I am. And the second layer of diffusion, it can be as small as this, or usually it's a slightly bigger piece like. Now I'm talking specifically about, this is when I'm using, if I'm using the diffuser outdoors, it's this. If I'm using the diffuser in the studio, I also have a piece like this that I roll over on itself so that it forms a, a, a semi-tube like this. Well, I roll it often enough to where it hangs down like this. And then I just put a piece of tape on the top of it, make it into a little handle like that, and stick this on. Oh, that's a long way down there. Stick it right across the, the middle part like so on one side and then like so on the other side, like that. And that will then eventually, if you roll it enough, it'll hang straight down like that. And you simply hang it over your specimen with a bendy arm or anything you've got that will hang it. So you've got the diffusion coming from all four or all eight or all 27 of your MF12s coming, zooming down here and then getting diffused when it hits this and this is the secret source. This is right on top of your specimen and it turns the specular uh, hot ball of light coming out of this into a big warm wall of light, which this is what this becomes. And it makes all the difference in the world. In each of these videos during the next nine days, I'm gonna show you a few of my uh, newer pictures.
Um, I, I'm going to be uh, putting these together into something special for next Christmas. But for this Christmas, I'm just going to show you some of the cool pictures that, that uh, you'll be seeing again. Okay, so that's that promise taken care of. Uh, several people asked for it, but that, that should take care of that. So in each one of these videos, I'm going to present you with an idea for a present for somebody who's into photography. And a lot of it's to do with macro photography. And uh, it's all very interesting stuff. And uh, I, I think that any of it would make a good present. In fact, some of it has been a present in the past. Uh, a couple of the things I'm going to show you today were given to me. And I didn't know they existed until I got them. But now I want to, to pass these onto you as recommendations. Something else I'm going to do is every day I'm going to also mention a book that I think that you might enjoy. Uh, and these are books again kind of around the whole theme of, of what we do here. So the first thing I want to tell you about day number one is the genesis of the blower. That should have been the title of the video, shouldn't it? The genesis of the blower. Blowers started out like this, right? Just rubbery balls with a squirty bit on the end. And that was it. And that's what you cleaned your sensor with. And that's, that's what you had to dry your insects with. And it would blow their wings off and their legs too. Terrible, terrible. So then they invented this one. This is the Weeble Blower. I don't know who makes it. I've had it for a long time. It's like one of those toys. You can't see this, but I'm knocking it over and it's standing back up again because it's got a weight at the bottom of it. It's a, um, I think it's a weevil or a weeble or some kind of toy that children would knock over and it would stand back up again. It sounds ridiculous, but that's, that's children, I suppose. And this thing, um, yeah, I like this. I've had this for a good long time. It's great for, for drying insects. And I thought this was the pinnacle I thought this was the end of blowers until my friend gave me for Christmas, not only a box of 10 reusable humidifier pillows. I tell you, honestly, it's a very nice gift and everything, but anybody who can use that for a pillow, they've got a sleeping problem. That's not big enough for a pillow, but they do get wet and they stay wet. So these are, for, these are for keeping your cigars wet. I am not even remotely sure why you would do that, honestly. I would have thought that they would catch fire easier if they were dry. But there you go. I learned something. Uh, but these things, if you are doing what I do and getting confused a lot and you're getting insects ready to photograph, and you realize, oh, you've prepped too many insects and they're sitting out desiccating in the uh, sun. Wet one of these and pop it underneath a dome with them and it'll keep them moist until you're ready to shoot them. This is a good thing. I've only had these for a couple of weeks and I've used most of them. So yeah, they're good. That wasn't what I'm reviewing. These are called Humicare. And it also comes with a bag with holes in it. Don't ask me what that's for. It seems like it would be a bag without holes in it for something wet, doesn't it? Okay, what were we talking about? Oh, the genesis of the blower. All right, so we're finally to it. Friend of the show, Bud Perot, gave me for Christmas a new blower. This one is called the Falcon S, and it specifies it's only an outdoor air blower. This is inaccurate. Shortly after getting it, I tried it in my car. It works for in-car air, and I've tried it at home, and it's very good at blowing indoor air as well. So ignore the front of the box. Outdoor air blower, not true. And here it is. And it comes in a neoprene or spandex. I think it's spandex jogging suit. See, it comes in stretchy, stretchy leggings. Like uh, who else used to come in stretchy leggings? Um, that big tall girl, Tony Curtis's daughter. Her, she wore these a lot in the 60s. But this is 
the ultimate blower. It makes, it makes this look old and tired and time to retire. This thing comes wearing a suit. It's got a magnetic do lolly on one end. Why? I don't know. I have no idea what the purpose of that is, other than to say, hey, my blower does that, does yours? I bet yours doesn't. And then hidden underneath this is, is this. I have no idea what it is, and I think I might not have supposed to have taken it off. Oh, I know what it is, it's a filter, it's a filter. So, and I probably shouldn't have taken it off, should I? Okay, well, it's back on now. It clips back on quite well. And then this protects it from people like me. So when this is on, nothing has to go through the filter. And then when that's off, things have to go through, but they don't because there's a filter. And um, this is the uh, keychain. I don't know what the rubber thing is for. No idea. In fact, I don't even know how you open this keychain. I don't think this is a very good keychain, to be honest. You're going to have to step it up next year, bud. I think it'll be next year before I get this open. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it says camera cleaning expert on it. It doesn't say ring opening expert. So, okay, it doesn't appear to have a join anywhere in it. So maybe, oh, it's a scam. Oh, no, there it is. I figured it out like that. You press on it. Not sure why you do that. Okay, one last thing. This is, watch this carefully now. This is a, a trick. The nozzle comes off and a new short, fat, stubby nozzle goes on the end. Why? I don't know. It's kind of midway between, isn't it? Nice. Yeah, nice narrow stream of air. Well, they're quite different, aren't they? I don't know how much this thing costs because it's rude to look up the price of a gift. Um, so you'll have to find out for yourself, but there'll be a link in the show notes. It's made by VSGO. I wonder if I can come up with what that must mean. Very silent goings on, <laughs> that's what it is. Okay, the box, uh, it, it saves space, it says. Well, obviously the empty box doesn't save space. They must be talking about this saving space. Don't know how, it seems to be bigger than this one. So, saving space, I'm gonna cross that out with the red pen. A one-handed operation. Okay, well, I've never met a blower that wasn't a one-handed operation. That would, would be quite a blower though, wouldn't it? Air filtration, special coating, rainproof and dustproof. Well, that depends, I suppose. The instructions, outdoor air blowing, flawless pictures derived from cleaning. And you thought it was from photography. No, it's not. Be a better cleaner. The Falcon S Outdoor Air Blower times 1C. I think that means there's one of them in the box. Short nozzle, 1C, one of them in the box. Long nozzle, one of them in the box, and a dust filter. That was that thing I showed you underneath the key ring. Magnetic out cell air blower warped with quick drying sports fabric. Split air inlet equipped with filter. Excellent rainproof and dustproof performance. Portable and convenient to use. Suitable for various cleaning camera scenarios such as outdoor. Reminder. Please blow several times to blow away the probable dusts on blower for first time use. Like that. That's the pre-blow. Um, the dust filter can also prevent the liquid from dripping and seeping in. Yeah, and I imagine it could. If there is residual liquid outside the filter before use, please dry it before blowing. Makes sense. 
You don't want to blow moisture onto anything. And lastly, do not soak during cleaning. Keep water away from the nozzle to avoid internal moisture that could affect normal use. And lastly, and I am not kidding, I'll show you a picture of this. Keep out of reach of children and do not eat. That could be a video right there because I want to see how you would eat this or the children. I'm not sure which it is you're not supposed to eat. But this is it. This is the Christmas present. You've got to get the F Falcon S outdoor air blower for cleaning your insects, cleaning your everything, apparently. As long as it's got outdoor air on it, you can clean it off with this. So it's a wonderful thing. It comes with a little gray envelope with a little lens cleaning cloth and a sachet. And it comes with a, a bit of cardboard. And all that is included for the one low price of, I don't know how much, however much it is. I love it. It's a great, great, great cleaning blower, much as their other one was, because this, I think, is the same company. They have the same logo, so if it's not, somebody's in trouble. All right, book. For the first day of Christmas, I always thought it was 12 days of Christmas, but Arlen knows best. I recommend to anybody who takes pictures of insects, whether you do it for fun or for a living, you need to have more than one field guide. But of all the field guides that are out there, this one, Insects and Spiders by the Audubon, is one of my favorites. It is full of color plates that give really excellent examples of what you're gonna find, oh, excuse me, of what you're gonna find out there in the wild. I would never uh, dream of doing what I do without a bookshelf full of these things. And they're great fun to read too. It's a great way to learn about insects. So uh, get yourself a National Audubon Society Field Guide to Insects and Spiders. Want to make a photographer very happy? Give him an outdoor blower. That's the first day of Christmas. See you tomorrow.